That's what he's saying. Just screwed now. The rally's. This got a Ferrari illegally impounded. It ruined my driving record for like two years and it cost me tens of thousands of dollars. Today, we're gonna talk about the single dumbest ticket I've ever received. Let's talk about this. Let me set the scene and explain what happened so all this makes sense. You're being cited for hitchhiking? Okay. Hitchhiking, yes, you're sir. kidding. <laughs> September of 2019. I'm doing Savage Garage with Randy and it had just begun to really take off. At the time, I think we had just passed the 100,000 subscriber mark. So for a channel that had just started, you know, things were really going well. This happened the day before our first ever Savage Rally. The plan for us was as a group, we were all gonna drive from Maryland to Detroit where the rally was beginning. Kind of like a pre-rally to the rally. We were going to take virtually all the cars we had featured on Savage Garage up until that point. So that was the Urus, the SVJ, two of Randy 720S's, his Turbo S, the F12, the Murcielago, I mean, even my Maserati is a film car. Basically every car you saw in our first like garage tour we ever did years ago, those are the cars that went on the rally. In fact, we filmed like that whole garage tour video the day this all happened. And this day before we were going to drive to Detroit, it was an incredibly busy day. First, we had to get all the cars to Randy's office, A, so we could all leave together, but B, because we wanted to film that garage update. And then me personally, I had to talk with the Golden Peaks production boys, the people we brought out to help film that rally with the big film car. I had to help them because they were gonna use my Maserati as a film car. They needed to build the rail system that they were gonna mount the actual camera rig to and all that. So I had to work with and coordinate with them like what we were going to be doing for this rally and also just anything they needed for the Maserati. But the final thing of the evening was driving my S600 and the F12 from the hotel the Golden Peaks production boys were staying at back to Randy's offices. I couldn't tell you why the F12 was there. Our buddy Sanjeev was driving it. We met Sanjeev on the Ace of Spades rally and had a ton of fun with him. So I asked if he could come to this rally and he came in. So that was a lot of fun. It was only a 10 minute drive back to Randy's offices from that hotel. But sure enough, uh, five minutes in, Sanjeev got lit up. And I was dumb enough to follow him into where he ended up going. This was where the nightmare began. But before we get to that, folks, we have to thank today's sponsor, which is Cook Unity. Cook Unity is the first chef to you meal delivery service. Each week, award-winning chefs craft hundreds of globally inspired meals from vegetarian to paleo and everything in between. Meals are delivered fresh, never frozen, and the menu rotates every week. So there's always something new to try. There's a lot of meal prep companies out there these days. And being in the bodybuilding, I've tried a ton of them, but none of them have stood out to me as much as Cook Unity has. And it's for one main reason. The food tastes amazing. As I've said, I've tried a bunch of these different meal prep companies. None of them taste as good as this. Each meal that I've had from them tastes as good as something I would have gotten at a high-end restaurant. The most recent one I had was the Mom's Sunday Sauce Rigatoni from chef John DeLucci from New York. Absolutely amazing, very filling, and I heated it up in three minutes in a microwave. And the price point for what you're getting here is fantastic. These days, because of how expensive produce and going out has become, it's a huge time and money saver to have high quality meals made with real ingredients, with nothing artificial, ready to go in your fridge that actually tastes good. They offer a wide range of meals with over seven different dietary preference filters, including vegan, paleo, and gluten-free options. And the subscription is super flexible. You can pause it, skip weeks, or cancel anytime. Get 50% off your first order of Cook Unity meals. Go to cookunity.com slash Jimbo50 and use my code Jimbo50 at the checkout to try them out for yourself. And thank you, Cook Unity, for sponsoring this video. So with that, check the link in the description down below, check out Cook Unity, and enjoy the rest of the video. Well, that was uh... That's not going well. Not one of our better moves. So essentially, Sanjeev uh, opened the valves up, went under an underpass on our way to see Randy, and didn't go too well. So, what are you gonna do? I'm just a little bit nervous because I didn't keep going. <laughs> I wanted to stop to film, and I was with him, so I'm hoping that I don't also get a ticket, but we'll see what happens. That one's not it either. Yo. What? Sanjeev and I are pulled over right now. <laughs> That's up? Yeah, um, he's coming to me right now, actually. Good evening, I'm Officer hey, Cowell with Montgomery County Police. Need to see your driver's license Absolutely. registration, please. Just you let you know everything's audio, video recorded. Good, no, that's awesome. 
How could we, uh, are we able to get a copy of it at some point? Just out of curiosity? I don't have anything to do with that. Got That's it. through our headquarters. No worries. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Here we go. Hi, camera. Uh, yeah, so here's my driver's license. I'm giving him my registration as well. Jimbo, did Sanjay get pulled over too? Oh, yeah. Um, I would imagine him accelerating through under the tunnel wasn't good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You got it. That's what just... we refer to as challenging for a race. Gotcha. Well, I mean, it wasn't a race. Um, I mean, if I if I could be frank with you on it, officer, can I just put this window up so this doesn't fall down? Is that okay with you? Yeah, there we go. Oops. Come on. Oh yeah, trust me, I won't. <laughs> trust me, this is my livelihood. I'm not dropping this boy. Um, let's see, I think that'll, that'll suffice right there. Okay, very good. Yeah, no, it's just, um, I'm sure you saw, but he's a Canadian. He's at, a, I gotta give you my insurance. Um, he you is- the insurance, just the registration. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, he's out of state. He's, uh, he came in just for, we have a little event going on, a little car show down the road. And um, he's never driven that car before. So just wanted to hear what it sounded like with the valves open. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, now I understand. That's, I can see where you definitely get that. But trust me, this boat doesn't race. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Now, the reason the cop said he got pulled over was complete nonsense. The reality was he got pulled over because he made a bunch of noise in a Ferrari. It was the end of the month and the cop saw nothing better to do. That was the real reason he got pulled over. But what the cop said was him in that F12 in the Ferrari, he was challenging me to a race. The problem is, is you both the car together. And the way we see that is challenge for a race. So that's what I'm saying. That's my reason for stopping. So that's what I'm stopping that for. That's what I'm going to issue the citation for. Because Sanjeev opened the valves up under the underpass, and I just happened to be coming out at the same time as him, that, according to the cop, was challenging to a race. Keep in mind, by the way, the cop made no attempt whatsoever to pull me over. He pulled the Ferrari over. I pulled into the shopping center after Sanjeev had already pulled in. The only reason I was getting a ticket here was because I was dumb enough to pull up. This is the citation that I told you I was going to write you. Okay, oh. for the speed contest. You need to follow these instructions. Choose one of these three options within 30 days, okay? Understood, Failure okay. to do so, on the 31st day, they will suspend your privilege to drive in the state of Maryland. So whatever you do, do something with yeah. this within 30 days. Absolutely. Okay? Now, we're gonna come back to that ticket in just a minute, because that's really what cost me the thousands and thousands of dollars. But first, let me talk about what happened to this F12. The temp tag that was on that F12 wasn't the right one. For whatever reason, that card had more than one temp tag issued for it. Like, couldn't tell you why. But the one that was on the car was out of date and the registration that was in the car had the previous temp tag number on it, so it didn't match. So of course, the cop did the next logical thing, which was assume the car was stolen. That's right, the guy who is clearly trying to help the cop get the information he needs and explain the whole situation, that is, hey, I'm from a different country and I'm driving my buddy's car. Um, no, he stole the car. Obviously, and I will say like this didn't help, but you know, Randy had a whole bunch of other stuff in that car, like registration and insurance wise. There was paperwork in that car for the Murcielago, the white NSX that he had. There were other random plates in the car. Like it was kind of weird. What's going on? Uh, uh, said that, uh, um, he said that there was a plate, plate in the car. He's like, he's going to run that plate. There's a, there's a, like a, there's 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 a, like metal, metal, metal. Metal. No, that's not it. That's not for that car. I, 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 did, I, I know. I said that. He's like, uh, he's gonna run it. So can you put me with the officer? Drive the NSX up. Officer, uh, uh, the owner. He says he's not gonna talk right now. He says he's, he's not, gonna not gonna talk. talk. Is that your bag? Uh, Mark, do you want me to come there? Well, and I can get it. Is that your bag? Go ahead and take it out of the car. Take it out of the car. Take your stuff, go ahead and take it out of the car. Take my take stuff out of the car? Yeah, go ahead and take your stuff out of the car. Okay. And I'll explain what's going on. This is going This is going on. Are you coming my car? That's what he's saying. Why? Because you're not going to run my car. That's what he's saying. He, he, he won't talk to me. He's like, he's like, any, he's like, anytime I ask him, he's like, go sit in that car and we'll take, 
He's like, I'm gonna write you a citation. And despite what we told him, despite trying to get Randy on the phone, explain what was going on, even as far as like Randy drove from his offices over to where we were and tried to show him the damn title that he had on his phone, the signed title that said he owned the car, the cop didn't want to see it. The cop just said, okay, well, now it's going to auto theft. Say they do tow it. How are we gonna, like, can you prove ownership with something else? I mean, I got the have... title in my hand right here. They won't look at it. And they won't look at it. Great. Officer, can I come over and talk to you? I don't understand what the confusion is. I really don't understand it. There is a, there are, there's a tag for that car from Maryland. From Fortunately, there's other things going on that I don't understand. That's why I don't work auto theft. Okay? <laughs> I bought the car from Loudoun County, exotic. Okay. Like I said, unfortunately, there are things going on that I don't understand and don't have and am not privy to. That's why the sergeant, we, we call the sergeant of auto theft and he tells us what to do. And there's nothing I can do about it tonight. Nope. As I was told, it's going to impound and you can contact them tomorrow morning. What time tomorrow morning? I believe they start at six. So is the officer there at six, the one I need to talk to? You don't even know that. Okay. I don't know that because I don't know their schedules. Okay. So that's going over the one right next to the fire department, right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I know I know exactly where that is. Okay. And that's where the car will be kept in that lot. Well, to start with, yeah. Then whatever auto theft decides to do with it is up to them. Well, then to clear it once I come there with a... Okay. Just like I said, I, I don't know. I'm not the auto theft guy. So I can't even get my paperwork out for the other car? No. You have to talk to them before anything else leaves the car. Great. We're just screwed now. The rally's you know, like, I know the Montgomery County Police don't have anything to do during the day, but this was pretty low and stupid, like, even for them. To basically say, and this is after you have put us in this position, hey, like, I don't really know what's going on here, but um, I'm still towing your car. Like, that's ridiculous. It really seemed like early on the cop had decided that he was towing this car, and I don't know if it was out of spite, you know, it just seems strange, you know, the fact that this cop went from, we're gonna give you a ticket that was kind of nonsense, to, you know what, it is now my like this is what I am doing today. I am getting this Ferrari towed. The cop refused to look at anything like documentation wise Randy had on the car. He wouldn't even let Randy go in the car after it was being set up to be towed. His car, like none of it made sense. None of it made sense at all. We ended up getting the car out of impound the next day and it wasted the entire morning and the entire afternoon. And we ended up being late to our fan meetup. But I mean, if there is a silver lining, at least we got like a halfway decent video out of it or a couple of videos. Now. Let's go back to this ticket for a second, because this is the real problem. The ticket happened kind of late in the year, and by the time the ticket got over to my traffic lawyer and he filed all the paperwork he had and scheduled the court date, COVID hit. And all of a sudden, every single court date, every single process, like all of the you know things that the courthouse was doing, they all got put on pause until like basically further notice. For the next two years, I had a five point ticket that sat on my record and really screwed up my insurance rates. And that really sucked on its own. But the really big problem that caused was back in February of 2021, when I was trying to buy my Aventador. Because you need insurance on a car that you're about to buy from a dealership, and I, I couldn't get insurance for it. It wasn't the case where it was just such an astronomically high rate, I wasn't gonna pay it. Literally no one would give me a policy. People wouldn't even try to write it. That ticket, the challenging to erase ticket, unfortunately for insurance, like they view that as basically drag racing. So for a lot of major insurance companies, they kind of red flag that as like a do not insure for someone my age that's trying to like insure that tier of a car. Now eventually I did end up finding a workaround and it was getting a commercial policy through Progressive. And here's how much that cost. My commercial policy from Progressive, which I couldn't believe they gave me anyway, but 40 minutes after talking to a nice woman on the phone, she wrote me a policy for one year. Take your guesses now. $25,000 for one year. <laughs> Do you know how stupid that is? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Like I, I'm gonna shop the policy around. I'm gonna get something else or I'm gonna deal with uh, getting that ticket off of my record so I can actually get a personal policy But at least for a couple months like my premium I'm paying like $2,300 a month to insure this stupid car just for scope. That's 
not far off of what I'm paying a month to lease this car. So, it looks <laughs> It's a problem, we're gonna fix it. But I just figured I'd tell you just because I figured people would find that interesting. $25,000 to insure a car for one year. So I ended up paying that for a couple months. And you know, I said in that video, like if anybody works in insurance, please reach out so we could try and figure this out. And thankfully one of you guys did. Like back then, one of the fans of Savage Garage reached out to me and he worked in insurance. And I ended up getting a policy through Farmers that was like $1,300 a month. It was still ridiculous, but you know, like for a 22 year old, driving a basically brand new, like late model Lamborghini and my record wasn't spotless. I just figured, you know, it's just gotta pay to play. You know, that's just the way it goes. And as time went on, like the rate did start to drop. Like when the ticket officially got wiped from my record, which we'll get to in a minute, but when it got officially wiped from my record, my policy dropped big time. Like I think it was down to about like $900 a month. So much better, still ridiculous, but way better than 1300 bucks. But come the day that this was seen in court, August 3rd, 2021. You know, I'll, I'll never forget walking into the courtroom with my lawyer and like hearing their version of the story of like what happened. And it was just, it was made up. Years ago on Savage Garage, I uploaded a follow-up video for this ticket and it didn't get a ton of views, but here's the explanation of what the state of Maryland said happened. I will paraphrase it in the best way I can possible. The lawyer representing the state goes, Your Honor, this officer observed Mr. Best as well as one other individual racing from a stop at a light right before going under an underpass. The officer then pulled both cars over inside of the parking lot to the right of the street, a little bit after the underpass. At which point, the officer towed the Ferrari and gave Mr. Best a ticket for challenging to a race. Now, state of Maryland, um, that wasn't even remotely close to what happened. Here's what actually happened. The light before the underpass on 355, it turned green. We drove forward as one would. We couldn't have tried to race from a dig because there were cars in front of us. The cop also could not have seen us leave that light because that's not where he turned on his light. He didn't turn on his lights until after Sanjeev was past the underpass. So there wasn't even a possibility he could have potentially seen us drag racing from a light or from a dig. That, that didn't happen. It was absolutely infuriating. But you know, my lawyer, Seth, I don't remember what the agreement was, but Seth managed to get the entire thing wiped from my record. Not just like reduction in points or a reduction to a different fine, like the entire instance just wiped from my record, which was kind of nice. So, you know, that's not on there, you know, but I still like over the years of paying those inflated insurance premiums for the Aventador and all the other cars that I had insured, like, it was a lot of money. You know, it was thousands and thousands of dollars extra that I was spending all because of this nonsense ticket that kind of got stuck in processing and was nonsense to begin with. I've always looked at this ticket as kind of karma for all the other stuff we did over the years with Savage Garage that, you know, we never got in trouble for or we got away with. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, at the end of the day, even though it was a pain, it ended up making for a good story. So with all that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment below like any BS story you have with, you know, the court system or, you know, just a bullshit ticket. Comment it below. You know, I'm curious to see what kind of story you guys have. But with all that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.